CataractCoach.com. Don't just break the sneaky, eh? fix the pupil. You can peel off the membrane that's distorting that pupil. Let me show you a case here. So the patient with prior uveitis here for cataract surgery, you can see the extensive sneaky there that's gluing down that iris to the anterior lens capsule. But in addition to just the sneaky, there's actually a membrane there underneath that's really grown there and distorting the pupil and it's causing it to be glued down. Now notice I make two pairs of TC incisions. That's so that we can have great access to all of that iris. So I'll start off by putting in some anesthetic and using the anesthetic cannula, 2070 age blunt cannula, to just break the initial sneaky. And that comes off the anterior lens capsule pretty easily. But you see, it's still not enough. That helps to separate it from the lens capsule, but there's still some contraction of that pupil margin. So we'll inject some viscoelastic here through the side pores. This is a dispersive viscoelastic, getting a reasonable fill of the anterior chamber. I don't need to overfill it at this point, so just a normal fill. And we're gonna peel off that membrane. I'm gonna show you how we do that. So let's first make the incision here using a diamond keratome. Gonna make a temporal incision and enter here in the anterior chamber. That's a pretty nice tunnel length. That's a small diamond of about 1.8 millimeters, so we'll slightly enlarge the incision. Now I'm gonna go in with our capsule rexus forceps, but we're not gonna do a rexus just yet. Watch carefully. Using the forceps, I wanna grab that pupillary membrane and peel it off. Now there's a delicate balance here. You don't want to yank very hard because you can disinsert the iris root, which would be an issue. But these forceps are enough to grab on that membrane and peel it off. And you can see we peeled off a good amount there. You're not going to be able to peel off 100% of it. That's okay. Peel off as much as you can. And you may also notice, if you look carefully, there's a little bit of bleeding from the pupil or iris margin there. And again, that's to be expected here after peeling this off. Remember the Iris is a pretty vascular tissue. So we'll peel off as much as we can. If you can't get all of it off, it's okay. Just breaking a little bit of that membrane will be enough to help restore a normal pupil anatomy. Again, the balance here is to do no harm. So I'm just pushing the iris out and I think I'm pretty happy with that. So we've removed a lot of the membrane, not necessarily all of it, but we've broken, broken any of the attachments there. So it's not gonna cause that same distortion. So now you can see the pupil expanded more. Now it looks like a pretty routine case. So we can get that rexus done. Again, the video here sped up. So we're showing it at, ha at uh, two and a half times now just to get the case done. But let me show you the pre-op picture. Here's the pre-op picture. You can see there definitely is a membrane there. And that fibrotic membrane that's holding that lens anterior capsule to the iris has to be removed. So that's what we do here in this case. So we want to peel off that membrane and it will restore a totally normal anatomy for this patient. So the nucleus itself now, let me show you, we're just going to chop it up and remove it. I'll show you the rest of the surgery here in two and a half speed, just so we can get it done. It's all pretty routine. Notice how the pupil stays wide open despite that manipulation. You're not getting much meiosis or contraction of the, the uh, pupil. So pupil stays wide open able to remove this cataract pretty easily, not a very dense cataract. And at the end here, we're gonna see it'll be a beautiful outcome. Now with extra iris manipulation, there can be extra sensation for the patient. So putting an intracameral lidocaine at the beginning of the case is actually very important. That's really gonna give you a good level of sedation here. Also remember that the iris is gentle, it's pretty wimpy too. So you don't want to be very rough on it. You can disinsert it from the root. There'll be more problems than you've ever anticipated. And you don't want to have too much bleeding here. So that's saying you learn in med school, right? First, do no harm. And I think that's an important lesson in a case like this. So this patient did have a prior history of uveitis, but had a nice quiet eye with no inflammation for about a year prior to the cataract surgery. We did pre-medicate with just topical steroids, prednisolone. We did not do any systemic steroids, and the patient did fine. So here at the end of the case, we'll put the lens in the capsule bag. Now, I do want to do a little bit of capsule polishing. We want to minimize post-op inflammation. There will be some extra inflammation because we manipulated the iris. So in that regard, let's put some triamcinolone in the eye at the end of the case, put in the anterior chamber. And we have videos on Cataract Coach of how to prepare that. 
You can certainly go to catercoach.com and type in Kenalog or Triampsilinone, and you'll see how we prepare that. A very low-cost option. So here it is, lens in the bag, nice overlap of the optic, nice good-sized rexus, seal up the incisions, and of course, we're going to put in some triamcinolone. So about a milligram of triamcinolone in the anterior chamber. It'll stay around for just a few days. It won't last too long. There it is. And that'll help really quell the inflammation. And I want to show you the post-op picture. This patient had a beautiful outcome and was so happy. Here's the post-op picture. Look at that. A really beautiful round pupil with no distortions. This is post-op day one. So certainly if you have a patient with sneaky, remember, don't just detach it or break the sneaky peel off that membrane and give your patient the best possible outcome. Plus, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.